Hey, this is JP, welcome to Jump On Music UK, and this is the brand new Artoria Astrolab. Now, most keyboards, you'd actually find a couple of different synthesizers in there and a couple of different ways of actually producing the sound. Artoria have gone all out on this and actually have 37 different instruments in here with no less than 10 different kinds of synthesis. If you're familiar with Artoria, with their software and all the different sounds that they actually produce through either modeling and synthesis, there are actually 1300 different sounds in this keyboard. So imagine the sounds you've got in things like Analog Lab and you've got all the different sounds that you've got on your computer or in the studio and take them on stage with you without needing the computer. But it goes way further than that. The way this is actually designed is really simplistic but that's deliberate because it's actually a focus on just performing and playing without having to get down to the nitty gritty of changing certain envelopes. So the keyboard itself is a 61 note semi-weighted keyboard bed which is absolutely lovely to play with aftertouch as well. Even though the idea behind the keyboard predominantly is for performance, like live performance, you can still connect it to the computer with the new version of the software of Analog Lab Pro. And now you can actually connect it to a mobile device with Astrolab Connect. So technically you don't actually need a computer with you, you've got loads of different sounds in here. Now there is some intuitive controls. There's macro control for here for each instrument and you've also got effects as well where you've got four of each and you've actually got a shift button where you can get further into things. So right now I've actually got it on the very first program it comes up with which is the American Grand Piano. It's the acoustic piano. <laughs> also got as well as some great visual feedback. You've got these dots going across the top and then as I play something you can actually see the blue lights there. They also have a couple of different colors depending on whether you're on part one, part two, or if you've got a split, as well as these lovely blue LEDs going around the outside of the controls. Or as you can see, as I move up and down the modulation wheel, if I leave it there, you can see very easily where you are. The predominant color is blue. So as we go into different things, you can see this one is blue, part two there. If I go to another one here, so we've got Ashes Bass and Lead. <laughs> There's actually a split just here. So right here is actually orange, and this is part one. And then from here onwards is green, and that is part two. You can see the controls here are still blue. If I actually pick on part one, you can now see they've changed over to orange. So as a two part split, I can play up to there and about here. There it is. And you've also got that after touch, so if I use this now, if I push down on the key. And we're getting feedback here from the actual screen as well. Really, really clever. We've got brightness, timbre, time, and movement. And then if we hold shift down, we can actually get to volume, bass, mid, and treble for EQing. The great thing is if I do hold the shift down and I control one of these, you can see there's a visual representation on the dial here on the main screen. Moving over to the effects, we've got effect A, B, delay, and reverb. So there's always a delay and a reverb there, which is really, really nice. With the shift key, you've got intensity for both of these effects, A and B, and you've also got the time and the decay. So I can actually change the delay time here. And of course, you've also got tap tempo as well. On this side right here, next door to the actual main screen, you've actually got ARP and chord. So we can put it in chord mode straight away. And then if we use our ARP, play around with it, and there's loads of different ones. Now when you actually turn this on, it actually says on the ARP, long press to edit. So if I hold this down, and there's a lot of long presses on this keyboard if you want to edit things, I can actually change the kind of ARP we've got. So I can say up, oh, got down, ordered, reverse, so let's go reverse. You can change the octave. And there's our rate there, so we're actually at 332. Let's go 116th. 
and you can change also things like the chord so if I hold the chord structure down hold that down you can change the scale what the root note is whether it's a major chord whether it's a triad you can change all different parts of it here now on the back you've got a couple of different interesting things starting with our power button and our power itself it also has a locking mechanism so you can lock it into place then you have USB-C connection and USB-A connection the USB-C connection is to connect to a computer so if you want to actually use this in your digital audio workstation you can do that directly but also you can connect to analog lab pro where you can load in different presets as well as creating a playlist and we'll get to playlists in a minute with the USB-C you can also plug in things like additional hard drives so if you've got playlists that you want to import you can do that there the USB-A is actually for things like MIDI so you could actually connect another keyboard so I could actually connect my Keylab 49 Mark II so then this could play one part and this could play the other but all the sounds are coming from here and we can actually control the macros and a little bit more from a MIDI controller keyboard. For our outputs, quite simply, we've got headphones and then left and right jacks. But you'll also notice on the keyboard there are inputs. So we've actually got XLR and jack combi inputs with a gain control. This is so you can work the vocoder that is built in to Astrolab. Then we have our sustain pedal, which I've actually got plugged in. And we also have an expression jack as well, if you want to plug in an expression pedal. And then you'll also notice OGS1 and OGS2. Now these aren't audio OGSes, these are auxiliary expression controls. So you can actually plug in something else to actually control different kinds of expression. And then finally on the back, we've got our traditional five pinned in MIDI, both in out. And of course the through is built into that. Now I've actually grabbed my iPad here because I need to read this bit for you because there's just something phenomenal about this keyboard. And that is the 10 different synthesis inside this keyboard. To explain this, if you have a look at a couple of different keyboards at the same price point, you probably get one or maybe two different kinds of synthesis. Maybe a hybrid synthesis, maybe a wavetable synthesis, or a dedicated vocoder. But the Astrolab actually has 10. 10 different kinds of synthesis inside this board. So the reason why I've got this is because I need to read it out to you. We've actually got virtual analog, we have samples, there's wavetable, there's FM synthesis, there's granular synthesis, there's physical modeling, there's vector synthesis, there's harmonics, there's phase distortion, and vocoder. So to put this in a really plain way, there's 10 different engines inside this keyboard that's there to produce over 30 different kind of instruments, which give you over 1,300 presets. If you go and get a normal keyboard, like a normal playable keyboard, it's probably got one kind of synthesis and then it emulates certain sounds and it doesn't do those sounds quite well. What this does is it's using Artorias technology that they've had for over 25 years, right through from modeling and FM to vocoder and wavetable and using them for specific sounds to sound the best. Now this screen is actually a dial and it's clickable. And this is how you actually get around the menu system. Now some people have actually said they don't like this dial, they think it's too small, they want something much bigger. And I've even seen one comment that said it reminds them of some kind of thermostat heating control. But I've had this a couple of weeks and I've actually got used to it and I applaud Artoria for actually just doing something a bit different. So it's a limitless turning dial and as you can see, as I turn it, and what happens is it, sh it loads up that program. So as you can see, there's a status bar there to see how far in we are. By the way, this is all just in piano, by the way. And it's loading different engines. So right there, if I just go back one or two, it's just loading the pigments one there. If I move across to something else, you have to give it a second and when it actually brightens up, it's ready. Now I've also actually set it, so just here, right in the bottom, I've actually set the percentage, so it's showing how much of the engine it's using. So right now, just sitting there, it's r roughly going between sort of 27, 28%, just load up, ready to go. As I'm playing, it's going up to about 30, 35%. If I scroll this round and just keep scrolling, it'll also, of course, get to the bottom. Let's go for something that's got two on. So. It's great. 
Now, the other thing as well is you've actually got these buttons. You've got the back, the up and down. Of course, I can go up and down by this. The only thing with that is they are quite clicky. I kind of wish they were a little bit more rubberized or not as clicky. If I go, obviously, for one of these, like piano, and it goes all the way to E piano, organ, bass, lead, keys, pad, strings, brass, sequence, and playlist, the alternative you can do is go through there. But the other thing you can do as well is you can actually click this dial. And when you click this dial, it gives you types. And with the types, we can go through different types. So let's go to strings. If I scroll this around again, you can see the wheel is going through. It's going through not just the strings in one engine, it's actually showing you all the available strings across all the engines, a little bit like Analog Lab does. So if you just search via strings, it'll show you them all. So if I scroll through here, we can pick something here. <laughs> If I give it a click, you can go into types, but I can go to back. And if I go back, it then actually goes into home. And this is the main menu. This is where you've got your types, you've actually got instruments, you've got artists, you've got light presets, sound banks, playlists, and settings. There's also a room there, there's a gap there. I'm wondering if they can add something in the future. And also on types, there's definitely a couple of gaps there. So that maybe they add a couple of different things. Now I talked to you about the 10 different engines and that's helping produce over 30 different kinds of instruments. And here they are. If I give this a click, it'll actually show me what they are. So we've got the ARP 2600, augmented piano, augmented strings, augmented voice, B3, the Boucher easel, am I saying that right? Clavinet, CMI, CS80, the CZ, D7, Emulator 2, Farfazer, June 6 and Dupe 8, Korg MS20, Matrix 12, the Mini, Modular, Multi, the OPXA, Piano, you've got Pigment in there, Profit 5, Profit VS, a sampler, the SEM, the Selena, the SQ80, the Stage 73, the Synclavia, the Synthi, the Vocoder, the Vox, and finally, the Whirly. The thing is, there's actually certain instruments in there, but also you'll have noticed it said sampler, where is it, there, and then you've also got sampler and you've got multi. Now sampler doesn't mean you can sample things yourself. It's actually a collection of sounds that have been sampled. And you've also got multi, which of course isn't one instrument, it's two instruments together. So this is the collection of all the ones that have multiple instruments in them. So for example, there's two there. If I scroll across, this is such a big menu by the way. Now the other thing you've got as well as the types and the instruments is you've got artists. Because Autoria are amazing at using modeling and synthesis and all this technology to create the different sounds that you've got, then they're able to produce the sounds that are exactly like the sounds certain artists use. So artists, you've actually got different tributes. So we've got everything from Aha, Air, Alan Parsons, Aphex, Beatles, Bruno Mars, Cars, all the way through, there's Daft Punk. You've got all these different ones and it would take me hours to go through them all. But then you've actually got uh, Midnight, you've got MJ Tribute, you've got all these different ones, Radiohead, and some of them only have one or two in, but then some of them have quite a lot. You've got Stevie Tribute, uh, you've got all the way right down to Yes. So let me just show you one of them, just as an example. So if I go to Stevie, you can see this one says Superstition Brass. I'm not going to play the actual uh, tunes because I don't want to get copyright striked on the channel. So you can see there what that one says, Superstition Brass. Let's go to the next one, Superstition Clav. You've got Boogie on lead here. Let's move over to the MJ Tribute. You may know this one. Oh, I'm just holding down one key. And again, 
again, I'm not playing the tune because I don't want to get copyright strike. But you can see there's actually loads of different tributes there for different artists. And I think that's just a really lovely thing for them to add on to an already impressive keyboard. You've got like presets, so if you've found something that you really like, you can heart it. All you need to do for liking a preset is long press the navigation wheel and you can actually see there you can like it, we can save it to somewhere, we can add it to a playlist, we can delete it, we can change the MIDI aspects and we've got info. And that's what you can do with every single sound. So if I was to go over to a lead sound, let's say I like that one, we just hold it down. I wanna say like. The preset's on the like preset. So now if I go back, my liked presets, that's my first one. So we've been through quite a lot of different things, but the other side of this keyboard is you've got your piano, you've got your bass, your lead, all these different sounds, and it's about putting those sounds together. And the last button here is playlist. When we click playlist, all of these go yellow. And what this does on the screen is it shows you exactly what you're thinking. You can create playlists, so you can pick the sounds and put them in the order that you want to. So you can just go next, 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 next. So in this one, for example, we've got the Astrolab demo. There's four songs with 40 presets in. So if I go into this right now, this is the first song, and the first song has 10 presets and then the second song has 10 presets. So very quickly, you can have up to 10 presets per song if you really, really want to. If we go to the next one. created a new playlist, we can then select a sound. So if I just went into a specific instrument, so let's go to pigments, and then I'm just gonna use the JP Super Keys. Wait, JP Super Keys. If I hold this down, and then I'm gonna move this across, and it says add to playlist, yes. And we're gonna add it to our new playlist, which is here. We're gonna add it to a new song. And the song's empty, that's fine, that's what we want. Success. So now, when we go into our playlists, we can go back one, we can go into our new one there, and there's song number one with one sound inside it, which is JP Super Keys. If you had more than one sound, then it would actually come up across here, but I've only got one in at the moment. Now I could harp on about all the different sounds for hours with this keyboard because it's got so many and it's just great to play. We even did a live stream where I connected this to the loop station and I'll leave a card up now if you wanna go and see that where we just played around with the sounds and created a load of loops. Now, a couple of criticisms about this keyboard. And these criticisms, one of them is very specific to a specific type of keyboard player. First and foremost, as I said before, people have actually complained about this screen. I actually don't see the problem with it. The whole design, including this wood design and it being strikingly white as opposed to black keyboards all over the place, I think it looks great and it'll also look great on stage. However, what I would like to see is a way to get through all of these menus quicker. Now they've added things like types and sounds and I get that and I understand that. And the process of that is then to save your favorites to a playlist. I understand that as well. But if I actually just scroll through here, this little dial at the end, this little icon that shows you how far in you are, I'm kind of scrolling forever or you can click these. And this is my next kind of problem with it. It's that noise. That noise isn't really very nice. What I'd really like to see is if you hold this down, then it would actually go like maybe carry on going and as you keep going it gets faster or maybe it goes times 10. Or we scroll whilst holding shift or something like that where it actually goes like 10 down or goes down to the next letter. Things like that would make it a bit nice, a bit quicker to search through. One of the only slight issues at the moment is one or two of the sounds take a little bit of time to load up, especially the string section. So if we go over to strings right now, 
I'm on a different menu. Did you see that? It took a little bit of time before it kicked in, and you have to just be a bit patient with it. That's fine. I'm going to carry on pl playing the piano like this while I just press strings. So it took about four or five seconds to load that program up, and you have to be aware of that, that it takes time to load and change a synthesis. Something, certainly if it's modeling or sample-based. It can take a bit longer, but it does sound fabulous. A really nice thing is the actual effects. You can turn them off individually. These buttons here are to turn the individual effects off, which is great for customization, and you've also got this instrument macro customization as well. But this is where the number one criticism for this keyboard has come in. If you're playing around with something like Pigments, or the Dupe 8, or an ARP 2600, these four controls aren't enough. A lot of people want to get access to the full rig, and you want to be able to tweak things Play around with more than just the brightness, the timbre, the time, and the movement, and the volume. And this is where that is a criticism that is valid. However, this is also where I'm going to defend this keyboard. The whole point of the physical structure of this keyboard is to perform and play with it. If you want to go ahead and then tweak that sound even further, and you have the license for it, then there's nothing to stop you connecting this to a computer. And then you can connect it to Analog Lab Pro to pair it up and then start playing around with the sound. But I think the avant-garde design of this is to set this up in a specific way and then just go and play. This keyboard, I believe, has two lives. Its primary life is actually things like on stage, being a session musician or being a performer and playing with this keyboard. That's it. There are loads of people out there who want these amazing sounds and they're not synthesis people. They just want to have a play with it and go, that sounds cool, I'm happy. Then the other side of this keyboard is in the studio and that's where you would connect this with its engine to a digital audio workstation. But the fact is you could be with this downstairs in the living room. You can even buy wooden legs for it so it actually doesn't go on a normal keyboard stand. It has its dedicated wooden legs and you can even with these four grooves here, you're probably wondering what they are. That's actually to put in a page stand for if you're reading music. The really nice part I think is actually the USB-C, the USB on the back. So if you do want that bit more control, you could buy a controller. Maybe that's what this space is for, put a controller here or an iPad here or your phone here to control things via MIDI and to control things via the app. It's a fantastic key bed with a semi-weighted control with aftertouch to play something as beautiful and delicate as a piano, like a grand piano. to complex strings. Right through to two different variances of pigments. I'd like to thank Source Distribution for sending this out to me through Artoria, and this actually is a loaner. I don't get to keep this, I do have to send it back. I really don't want to. I think this could be the central hub of a modern musician's studio where you can just sit and play with the headphones on, and then when you come up with something, you can plug it into your computer and then play something into your digital audio workstation. Like a normal synthesizer or keyboard, but with having that technology that comes from Artoria and can only come from things like Analog Lab Pro. If you are interested in this keyboard and you want to learn more about it, there's links in the description box. And of course, we've got links in the description box if you want to go and buy one of these keyboards, which are affiliated links and no extra cost to yourself, but they do help out the channel if you click them. And if you have, 
Thank you very much. Now this is their flagship avant-garde stage keyboard for performance on both the live stage and the studio. However, if you're just getting into keyboards and you need a MIDI keyboard that is a fantastic starting point, then have a look at this video right here where we go over this. This is the Essentials 49 Mark III. 